What's up everybody, Liam Clisham here for another exciting Redshift tutorial. This week's another quick tip, with the release of 2.5.52, we now have the ability to render colored instances inside of Redshift for Cinema 4D. So we're gonna take a look at that right now. <laughs> So now that we're inside Cinema 4D, I have an HDRI light set up just with this dome light right there and a camera. The only other things that we need right now is a cloner with an object inside of it, a random effector, and a material. So let's go ahead and start with our cloner, just like that. I'm gonna choose a platonic right over here and throw that into the cloner. And it's kind of hard to see right now, so I'm gonna turn off this HDRI. And let's go into our cloner. So something about the update that just came out for 2.5.52 is that we can now do colored instances before you could do randomization and get random colors, but it couldn't be on instances. So now that we can, we're gonna go ahead and check this box here for, ran for render instances. I'm gonna up this to say 20. I'm gonna kill this spread apart and we're gonna control all that with our random effector. So let's go ahead and grab that. Right in here is a random effector. Let's spread this apart a little bit. Maybe a little bit on the X there, a little bit on the Z too. Let's go ahead and put our scale at say like 0.85. It's looking pretty good, I think. So do I want any rotation? Now let's just leave it as is. We'll keep it pretty simple. So right in here, we're gonna choose our redshift material. Go in and just grab a regular Uber material right there and throw it onto the cloner. So now we can start to see we've got some actual shading to it. It's not blown out. And we'll come in here. And what we're gonna do is start using one of these data nodes. And you'll see we've got quite a few. We've got color, integer, scalar, and vector. What we want is color. Grab that and let's go ahead and put it in our diffuse. There we go. And it goes black. And that's because we're not pulling from anything yet. So what we need to do is come over to our random effector and make sure we turn on color. And then under this attribute name, we're gonna go to MoGraph color. And just like that, you'll see we start to get randomization of colors. And these are all instances, so it keeps it super light. So I wanna go in here and turn on our dome light again so we can really see this. And like I said, it's super fast. If I turn on bucket rendering, it's already done doing its point cloud and it's all set there. If we update this, let's say we want 50. Because there are instances, it's gonna be super fast. This is all bucket rendering right now. If I go back to progressive, you'll see extremely lightweight. And let's, just for giggles, let's see if we can crash it. We'll do 500 instances, nothing. So it, it's just super lightweight now. You can have random colors whenever you want and it's super easy and fast. All right, that's it for this week. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments or send me a message directly. Also, if you wanna interact one-on-one, -on -one, every Thursday we do Redshift Live. It's a streaming event where you guys can chime in through chat. I answer questions and tackle any problems you may be having inside of Redshift. Thanks again so much for joining us and I'll see you soon. Prograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Prograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. Throw in HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped.
Our weekly long-form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you gotta make stuff that you're not gonna put on your reel, and I'm not here to judge. The podcasts and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Aryev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hassenfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammert, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kaju, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Kornman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omatola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimpse, Patrick Longstrom, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. Pretty good, I guess.